Welcome, welcome. So we are sewing today. I love to sew. I love the sew alongs. This is 1819 Sheila's jacket. And I wanted you to, I wanted you to see it for several reasons. So first I wanted you to see it because it is a great pattern for fabrics that are great on both sides. And I put up some new fabrics this morning that are great on both sides. Um, it's just a great way to show off both sides without compromising the pattern or anything along that way. So that's number one. Number two, I wanted to do it because it's a jacket. It's in the jacket family. It has a two-piece sleeve, but it doesn't have a shoulder pad. But it uses tie interfacing. And so the interesting thing about tie interfacing is tie interfacing was probably one of my hallmark classes when I first started in trade shows, you know, whatever, 40 years ago. It seems like a long time. But anyway, um, and yet a lot of people, as we've grown, that are new to to silhouette patterns don't know about the tie interfacing. I was in Seattle yesterday and was showing a lady, you know, how to use it and she knew how to use it, but a lot of the class didn't know how to use it. So I'm really excited to show you this concept of tie interfacing. It's like the miracle, <laughs> you know, the miracle notion, um, but it's really wonderful. And so with all that said, we're gonna get going. This is just so many different ways to do this pattern. We do have a shorter line on here because it's a great little short jacket. If it's a heavier fabric, I would do a little shorter fabric. But the fabric I'm using today is 5852. Um, all the normals, I'm using um, 3.5 stitch length. And just as we go along, if you have questions, let me know. We're going to start on page number one of our guide sheet. And the cool thing is about this jacket, like I said, is it's really easy. It's really fun. So I have cut out and I, what I did is my 5852 you can look at it, it's a wool blend and I did the front on a bias you know I love bias I just love bias and especially when in this particular case by doing the front on a bias nothing has to be matched maybe that's why I like bias because typically you'd have to match things but there's really nothing that has to be matched when the front is a bias because it sews into um, the back and the side seams don't have to match, and the sleeves, the front sleeves typically will match, and they don't have to match. So it just makes sewing really easy. It does have a two-piece sleeve, and we will have to match that two-piece sleeve. But when we get there, I'll show you how I cut it out and how I laid it out, just kind of to make things easy. All right, so dart number one. And I, I'm not a back stitcher. I don't like to back stitch on internal places so I'm I just take a minute to tie the knot and if that just is too frustrating for y'all to watch it's it's um, cup of coffee time and come back <laughs> but I just like the um, how flat that dart lays when it's tied off all right so that's number one and then we'll do number two and in this particular um, garment, you need to make sure that you notice on the pattern where the, where the tip of the dart is marked. It's a little farther up from the, um, the edging of the cut line because the cut line of this dart has seam allowance where the um, but the seam allowance crosses and it can't go all the way to the dart. Okay, two darts sewn, two darts down, and that's all we do in column one, is we sew two darts. We can handle that, right, you guys? And then we go to column number two. All right, off topic question, tie interfacing. Will you ever sell it by the yard again? Because last time I checked, you sold the one in strips. Um, we will never sell it, I can't say never, we sell it, um, if you all go and do a search for tie interfacing, you will find that um, it's not available. <laughs> so because I have a contact in New York, that's the only reason I can get it. Um, the contact I had is an old friend, and he had a tie, Jerry, if you guys remember, Jerry Garcia Tie Company. So that's the only reason I get it. And so we get whatever we get and we're lucky and feel lucky to get it so if you guys know of any other source just 
you can go for it there. Okay. Um, should your jacket come to the knee? No, it's um, it's not to the knee. It's a little. Sh it's between the between the crotch and the knee. It's kind of halfway in between. And how can we make it appropriate for our height? Go back to your proportions and just make it fall into one of your proportions. It can be the bottom of your hand. It can be halfway between. It can go to your knee if you want. It shouldn't go to the knee. It should go just above the knee. Um, but just follow any of your proportions. Any of those proportions would be appropriate. Okay, so here I've got the sleeve and I've, I cut out right sides together. So I'm just gonna put a little pin right sides together. So I don't, whenever you're working with a fabric like this, again, this is 5852 is my fabric. Very easy to make the two sleeves that are alike because you can't really tell the wrong side and the right side. So I put a pin in the right side so that I won't make two sleeves that are identical, which is not good news. And it's never fun when you figure that out. And you usually figure it out after you've done a lot of work. Okay, so those two go together. So now what I did on this sleeve is because I do want these uh, lines to match, I put the bottom of the sleeve at the same place. And what I also did is I left um, about, a, I cut an inch longer than I needed at the bottom so that if I had to squiggle it up or squiggle it down a little bit as I start to sew, I could do that without any problem, without losing the length. So that's just an old trick that I've done over the years is when you're trying to um, match, especially like on a sleeve or on a side seam, if you give yourself some, a little extra, then you'll find that match is much easier to do. Okay, and so I'm going to sewing machine this because I want to be exact and I want to make sure it's okay. And then I'm going to just, I just did a little bit. And you can see where it comes across there that I've matched. And you see the red is the red and the black is the black, so it's matching perfectly there. And so I'm going to continue. But you can see where I was a little off at the bottom. And because I feel like I'm going to get the whole sleeve, I'm going to go ahead and do the serge. And the only thing I have to be careful of is that as I come up, I don't allow the bottom layer to get pulled in or slip. Okay, and you can typically do that just by holding the back and the front of the fabric. Now this particular fabric that I'm using is a, uh, I think they're like one inch squares, and they're very, they're um, the same both directions. So that makes it a little bit easier because you can cut, you can cut it out in any direction, and it works. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Is there something that can be substituted for tie interfacing? No. I mean, I typically will say, y'all are really creative to use whatever you want, but I've been in this industry, as you all know, many, many years, and I do not know of anything. This just looks nice. Okay, good deal. Okay, so that's one side. How many yards you ended up using since you cut this pattern diagonal? I still, I got away with two yards um, because I kind of fussy cutted. I, it took my time. If you're trying to just do a hurry, you probably ought to get an extra yard, but I got it in a yard. I mean, I got it in my two yards because I was really careful how I laid it down and I only cut one layer, you know, one front at a time. Then I cut the other front. Okay, so this is the other side of the sleeve. And as you go, it, it has a tendency, this particular fabric, you've got to really keep it, keep it um, not pulled. I see that it's changing as I go up the sleeve, so I want to make sure that that doesn't happen, mainly because the fabric actually changes angles. So it will probably go off a little bit and you're not going to be able to help it. 
So I'm going to turn that inside just to make sure. How much ease did you choose for your jacket? I have two inches in mine. But I also have, um, I'm going to actually roll this sleeve up. You know, not roll, roll, like, but I'm not going to let it go down full length. I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you when I finish. So because of that, it gives us, it gives you a little more mobility. The longer the sleeve, the sleeve affects the ease in your jacket. So if, it, if you're doing a long sleeve, you really need to do um, a longer roll. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. Okay, and then the bottom of this sleeve, you can serge it. I'm actually not going to because I don't want that extra weight. Um, I'm gonna press that here in a minute and I'm gonna do my other sleeve. All right, how is everybody? It's definitely fall, fall is here. Kind of fun. I think the whole reason I moved to Dallas was for fall. <laughs> it was as cold as it could get, and I could still use fall clothes. Because I hate the cold. I was in Seattle yesterday, and it was cold and rainy. And I thought, oh, this is miserable weather. And then <laughs> Dallas was colder and rainier than Seattle. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, maybe I should stay in Seattle. But I think it's supposed to be like back up in the 70s today here in Dallas. It definitely comes and goes pretty quickly. So by the time I'm doing the second sleeve, I can kind of see where, and you can see how well that matches. I can kind of get a feel for how it sews and where it slips. So I don't really need to do it on the sewing machine anymore. And I can still see that these, the lines are matching. And so that's why I'm, I've skipped the sewing machine and gone straight to the surgery. Just you gotta keep this bottom layer just taut. So this morning we sent out an email to, um, I've had a lot of email questions on where do you find this pattern. So this morning I sent out, when, when we sent out that, reminder in an hour email, we put a link to where the pattern is. And that way, I've just felt like it'd make it a lot easier for you all and we wouldn't have to answer as many emails because we get a lot of emails. But it's on the Fit to Stitch site and it's on the donation page. And it's a part of two patterns. Okay, I'm gonna put that up there too. And that takes us to the bottom of that same column. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the shell collar. And so I've got my two fronts, and I put them right sides together. And that's where your pins come in, because it's really helpful. And just a tip here, and I've seen tips on this, and I've always found it to be interesting, because um, when you're doing like a seam, like this shawl collar, and this shawl collar is going to open, I don't use a serger on these. I don't have to worry about that um, fraying because it's, it's just not gonna have any agitation. So I just use a regular, or I would serge both, if I was, I would serge both sides and then sew it because when it folds over itself and that seam is opened, it's gonna lay so much flatter. It's gonna lay so much cleaner. The bulk just really is reduced where when you serge that seam, you've got all that seam allowance laying on top of itself twice. When you cut single layer, is the pattern piece supposed to be the right side of the garment seen from the right side of the fabric? It doesn't make a difference. Um, whatever you cut first, you cut the opposite next. So if you're doing the right side, then you cut the wrong side. Because you're gonna, what I do is when I cut my first piece, I use it, whether it's up or down, whatever it is, I use it and lay it on the fabric and I use that fabric as my pattern. And that way the pieces are, especially when I was doing this, because they're just more apt to be exact. Especially 
um, if you look at this on my two sides, my two sides are just exact because I literally laid the one piece down to cut the next piece. So all this, everything matches because all it was exactly laying on top, top. Whereas if you're using the pattern, you can't see how well it matches. So I just cut it single layer so that I can use that piece then as a pattern and I can lay it exactly on the stripes and checks and I can see that it's exact for the next side. So that's the reason I do it, if that helps, or how I do it. Okay, so we're gonna sew the back now, this shawl collar into it. And I've got the center back and the right side of my garment, of my back, marked. And remember on this, there's no alignment because um, I've got a bias on one side and straight grain on the back. And I did think it'd be cute to do straight grain on the back. I mean, a uh, bias on the back, I thought that might be cute, but I decided that was just more work than I wanted, so, so I opted not to. All right, I, I had the wrong side of the collar on here. I just gotta do that again, sorry about that. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm lining up the seam to the center back. So the seam of the shawl collar goes at the center back of the garment. And then what I have is I have the shoulders are gonna come here. And I'm just gonna double check to make sure I've got right sides together, which I do. Okay, let's answer some questions. And so all I'm doing is, just like in the guide sheet there, I'm just lining up, uh, you get to the shoulder and that's where you're gonna clip. And here, I'll kinda do it here and maybe we can come in close and show you there. So I start at the shoulder, I come in through here. I tried to order the pattern on Fit to Stitch, but I cannot select PayPal, although PayPal logo is on your site. I don't think PayPal logo is on our site. We don't take PayPal, I can tell you that. We don't take PayPal. If it's on our site, if you'll just send me an email and let me know where, we'll take that away, but we don't accept PayPal. PayPal has a, just a very high percentage rate, and we just can't, we just can't do it. So I'm sorry about that but we do take MasterCard and Visa. Okay, Peggy, is the shawl collar a better choice for a jacket? Um, I don't think it's a better choice. I think the shawl collar was created for uh, the effect of the fabric. What I like about this particular shawl collar is it's a shawl collar and shawl collars are typically female collars, you don't really see a shawl collar in men's apparel. You are starting to, um, but you, you see it mainly for floral fabrics. But what I loved about this is you notice it's a shawl collar, but it's, it's a notch lapel shawl collar, which you just don't see. And so again, because of my background and when I see something that is uh, pretty unusual, I, ha I have a tendency to gravitate to it. I just really like that different. So this is a shawl collar, which is typically meant for feminine fabrics, but it's done in a, a you know, a, a notch lapel, or we're gonna make it a notch lapel by the way we cut it. That is a pretty cool combination. Okay, so I'm lining up the back, the back neck. We're gonna sew this all in one seam. I think you all know how to do this. Um, and we sew it from the front. The shawl collar is up, the back is down because I have to see where I can pivot. So we'll do that now. Uh, the description on your website is back is back to one yard of tie interfacing for easing sleep caps, 22 inches wide, just so you know. Maybe in a webcast you could show us exactly what we get. Yeah, okay, we'll do. And we'll make sure we fix that, I appreciate that. Why would it be more work to put the back on the bias? Um, because if you put the front of the bias and the back on the bias, then those two biases have to align at the side seam. The, the, you wouldn't want those angles to just mesh in a mess. You would want to make sure that the angles on the front and the angle on the back were exactly the same um, so that they would come in at the side seam perfectly. And also keep in mind you've got a French dart here which alters that pattern and you've also going to take up quite a bit more fabric if you put the, bio, the back on the bias also, okay? Are you clipping the shoulder garment piece or the collar? I can't see it. The clip, look at the guide sheet. Um, it has that picture that's up right there. 
And a lot of times we do that guide, you guys, because I know sometimes you can't see because of the fabric or because I'm sewing or whatever. But it, there's a big circle there and a clip as to where exactly I'm clipping. So if you just notice that, it says clip here, and it shows a circle, and it shows it um, you know, large. That's where we're clipping. OK, so let's go ahead and this is where I'm going to sew a 3 8 I'm going to sew. This is the, so this is the shoulder seam I'm actually sewing right here. And then I'm sewing to the clip. And keep in mind that clip doesn't have to be just exact. That's one reason I like a shawl collar. Shawl collars, I think, are, uh, I don't think they're easier. I think they're just different. Once you sew that, you're going to change directions. And now I'm sewing the back neckline. Just make sure you, you want to make sure you're not getting anything caught in there so that it lays flat. If you do, you can always go back and you know, kind of unpick a couple stitches and fix it. I'm stitching open my seam so that it will, that's where I'm talking about how it will lay much flatter back there. And then here we go. That was centered back, and so now I'm coming around to the other neck edge and then to the other shoulder seam. So you're so, you actually create the neckline in one fail swoop. It's pretty simple. It's just that some women get really caught up with the whole shell collar thing. And there's my clip again. And at that clip is where you want to pivot. And you move all your fabric out of the way. And then you'll head to the other side of the shoulder. Okay, and keep your lot, keep your raw edges aligned. Sometimes when you're doing a shell collar, at least for me, I'll get a bump or a ridge on the underside. And if that's the case, just take a minute and just smooth it out so that um, you can see. Whoops, I'm stepping on a cord, I'm sorry. I've got mic packs back here to where I can't stand up. Okay, so here you go. Um, here, there, and you can see that shell collar. It's really pretty. Now, in this particular case, when this folds back, that seam is going to show. So that seam should have actually been done to the inside. And, and I'm going to take it undone, just a couple clips, and I'm going to fix that, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Because this is a single layer jacket, and it has it in the directions. And I actually, when I was doing it, I couldn't just now, I couldn't figure out which side was which. So I thought, I'll just do it. And if it's wrong, I'll just show you all how to fix it. So you're going to undo this seam here. And I'm going to take and flip this to the inside. And just put the seam in again. I just couldn't tell which side was which here for a minute. And so instead of, like I said, instead of trying to figure out, I just thought, oh, if it's wrong, we'll show you how to do it wrong. And if you do it wrong, it's just really easy to fix. So no panic. So actually what you're doing is you're putting the right, wrong sides together. Then I'm going to go back and open this up. And I'm going to restitch that neck edge. And I'll, sh I'll show it to you close up here in just a second just so that this lays flat and sews across the back. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do the serger here in a minute. And the reason I'm going to do that is I didn't want to do the neckline. So if you'll notice, this is the right side. But I've got the collar right here. I'm going to pull those threads here in a minute. And I'm going to serge the edge so you won't see any of this kind of ugliness. going to pull those threads in. So when the collar bends over, the right, the seam will not show. That's why we're going to do it that way. So you can see that that's the right side. But I've got, I actually, when I sewed this, I put the wrong sides together to sew that center back seam so that as it folds over itself, you can see that it's completely covered. So just a little detail. It won't make that big a difference if you don't. Um, but just to let you know, that's the way it's done in an unlined shawl collar. Pattern says to put wrong sides together to sew first seam on shell. So put right sides together. Were all the, ba were all the pattern pieces cut on the bias? No, just the front. Just the front. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this up on the serger. And, and when you do that again, I start from the right, I mean, I start from 
the shoulder. I don't try to make it continuous. And I'm just finishing edges here. The stitching's been done and the stitching is good. This is just for, you know, for looks. All right, and then I'm at a point where I really want to press because you can see that what we're doing next is we're gonna set in those sleeves. And I really wanna press them before I set them in. going to move on now to column three, but I'm going to take a little detour. Nope, nope, the bottom of column two, I'm sorry, I'm not taking a detour. The bottom of column two is where we're at, and you can see there it's kind of sneakily stuck in there. We're going to sew the side seams. So I haven't got the side seams sewn, and I'm going to do that right now. And I'm also, I'm tying the back of that seam that I did because it doesn't have another, until I finish the edges of this garment, it doesn't have another seam to go over it. So I'm just going to tie that to kind of secure that there. And it'll keep it nice and safe. I'm going to serge the side seams. I don't have anything to match. Um, they're going to serge in pretty quickly. There, are, there is always a chance when you cut on a bias, the front, that the front will... Uh, not be a stable and will grow. So be aware of that. And for me, in this particular case, I was actually going to tell you that I was going to jump ahead to do the side seams because I didn't want to leave them kind of unsecured. Once they're stitched, they won't grow. But I wanted to make sure that they were kind of stabilized. So I've put the front and the back together at the side seam. I'm kind of giving a little bit of pressure to the under layer just to make sure that the top layer is not going growing on me and we're good okay and then I'm going to do the other side seam I just think this is the cutest fabric and the cutest jacket okay Fabric 5852 is the fabric we're using. And we're going to do the other side seam. Then we're going to press. Then we're going to set the sleeves in. OK, this is side number two. With questions, are everybody OK? Are you guys sewing with me? You know, when I'm in workshops and everybody's sewing and I'm not, I get this craving to sew. It's crazy. So now I get to sew. To those ladies in Seattle, we sure had a fun workshop. We had a really fun workshop. So thanks everybody for attending. Everybody was just fun. Just fun to get together, you know, with women and just sew. Just talk darts. So that front moved a little bit. My side didn't quite match. And I've sewn this enough times to know that the pattern does. So I'm going to have to true that up a little bit later, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. What I am going to do right now is I'm going to go to the next column. And, but before I go to that next column, we're going to do a little bit of pressing. Okay. I haven't pressed anything. I haven't pressed my darts. And that's when you know the fabric is a wool because you can smell it. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about wool is, I think, is just how really nicely it presses. So when I'm here and I'm at the side seam and my front grew a little bit, don't trim the whole thing this amount, just trim where it grew and taper it back into nothing at the front. Again, because it's secured, it won't continue to grow. So just carefully take off that front 
because you don't want to change the front. There's no reason to change the front. Nothing changed with the front. It was just the side seam where all that bias came into effect. And then you can see what it's going to look like. That looks really pretty. Okay. Penny, thanks for showing what your opinion is sewing so helpful. Good, good, good. I love um, thank you so much for showing the collar details. Good. That's what it, that's why we're here. We're really um, if one were adding pockets, what style do you recommend? So if I were adding pockets, um, if you go to the trench coat, um, the trench coat is a Burberry trench, and it has a French dart. And when I put those pockets right into that French dart, I love that. I love that look. Um, it gives you a little bit of stabilization for the pockets. So I would put them right into that French dart. And they, were really, they are really pretty when that happens, I think like a welt, or you could do um, a, single, a single flap. Either way, whatever you decide to do. Just keep in mind that pockets are not, you know, welt pockets are not really, um, they're not really stable. They're not strong, they're not secure. So if you use pockets a lot, and if you put them in your garments, which is all good, um, in some regards, you're gonna limit the life of your garment because those pockets will have a tendency to go first. OK. Um, are you going to Puyallup in March? No, I'm, no. No. But I hope you all go. It's a great expo. We just um, don't have time. <laughs> Puyallup, I think you have to really go to Puyallup. Um, Puyallup is amazing. But no, I was just in Seattle. So we did our good to Seattle. On the collar, could you use a flat fell seam? Um, on the collar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure, I see what you're saying, yes. When, when you're talking about that right side and that wrong side, absolutely. Yeah, French seam, lots of things you could do. But remember, the underseam is never really going to show, so you don't really need to, I mean, as long as you finish it with a serger. But those are all details that are kind of style details and up to you guys whatever you feel like you want for your garment. And I, obviously we know that's the greatest thing about sewing. We get to really do all those fun details. And then we get to find sewers who will listen to us share those details because they're kind of fun to <laughs> show to other sewers. Okay, so I usually press from the wrong side and then I'll have a, pre a tendency to press from the right side. Again, this is wool and it presses so beautifully and easily that it's pretty nice. Okay, so that's done. I've just done my side seams and my collar because that's really all I've sewn. And then I'm going to press these sleeves and we can answer questions. I tried to um, order with a credit card because you said there's no PayPal, but the payment won't go through. Are you only accepting U.S. credit cards? No, no. We, <laughs> we ship internationally every day. Literally every day we ship internationally. Um, so I would suggest what we have found, and we don't know why, we've not been able to figure it out, just use a different credit card. And I know everyone has said, oh, it's not my credit card, but it is somehow the credit card. Some credit card companies are just not allowing it to go through, while others are. And again, we cannot figure out what the math of that is. It just seemingly seems that that's the case. OK, so I've pressed these sleeve seams open. Well, not open because I surge them. I press them to one side. And because I was lining up the, um, the top part of the sleeve, or I was lining up the plaids all the way, or as far as I could anyway, uh, because that seam is not straight, it's not going to line up exactly all the way, just FYI. But you always want to start at the bottom because that's the part that's going to show. The bottom part, the top part of the sleeve where it's inserted, really won't show, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the top part of the sleeve just so that it's even and continuous. And what you can do, um, I know the pattern well enough, but if you don't, just lay the pattern back on it and then trim it up according to the pattern. But I just want those edges to be continuous so that one doesn't stop shorter than the other. 
No, we ship to we ship all over. We ship all over the world. But we've got one customer in particular who's you know, really mad and I don't blame her, but I don't know what to do about it. We can't get her credit card to go through. She lives in Belgium and she's a really good customer and since the new site they can't figure out why it won't take her credit card. We've done everything. So it's just frustrating and I'm sorry. But if you can't get it through and you just really have tried a different credit card and tried all those things, just shoot me an email and let me know and we'll you know, do a special ticket is what we do. Oh, sewing is so much fun. I just love this. I picked out, I mean, I, I really created the whole outfit before I even started sewing it. Because I really love fabrics that are kind of summer looking in wool products, like that you can wear all year round. I just really like that look. So that to me is what this is. It's a, it's a red and white and black. It's, it's a winter white, it's not really a white. But so I got that red shirt and I thought it'd be really fun to just have, you know, have it long with just a black pair of leggings and just a cute little red top. It's just easy and good. Okay, so what I was gonna do with this now, just I'm gonna do it now. I've got the sleeves ready to go. And so, I wanted to fold up the bottom. So I had cut these a little bit longer because I'm just going to cuff up this. And that's the other reason I did this in a red thread. I really wanted that red serger thread. So that's what my cuff is going to end up like. And for a minute, I'm just going to pin this. I, I'm actually not going to do a finish on the bottom of the hem. I'm just going to roll it up. And so I allowed two rolls. And then by the time I do the two rolls, it's going to be like a three quarter sleeve is how it will end up. I just really like that. I saw it on a jacket the other day at the store and I thought, that's cute. So we're gonna go one, and it's about <clears throat> maybe two inches, two and a half inches, and then two the second time. And I actually tried this with a black thread and I just really liked it with a red thread better, so that's why I chose the red serger thread. All right, and we're gonna do that again. How are we on questions, we're okay? Okay, so let's do the tie interfacing now and let's set these sleeves in and show you how to do that, okay? And we're all pressed and ready to go. Okay, so my strips of tie interfacing, however you get them, if it's by the yard, if it's, you know, what we do is we, um, we are literally buying t tie shells, tie, in tie inners, innards is what they call them. And so they're already on the bias. And so you're gonna get these, we, we offer two pieces, I think. I don't remember the price, but um, you can get like, you can get at least four strips. So that's enough for two jackets out of that. And like I said, um, I would love to be able to find them someplace else and I've not been able to. So um, let's start with, the sleeve and it's kind of a mirror image of itself although the seam that's higher is the back and the seam that's lower is the front but if you can imagine where the notch is and the notch is like where the sleeve changes directions I mean you could clip it if you want but just right around this area right here is where I'm going to start to do my tie interfacing so my tie interfacing I've got I'm going to lay that down I'm going to turn my machine to baste so for me I go to a six and your tie interfacing, you want to be one inch wide and about 20 inches long, okay? And you're gonna lay it down on the inside, the wrong side of the fabric, and you're going to anchor it. You, again, you want to be, um, it's gotta have a, a basting stitch because if, it do, if the stitch isn't long, it won't allow the fabric to pull up underneath the fabric. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just anchor that down and pull. Now, the only thing that I would say you need a little bit of practice is that your pull needs to be consistent. Um, and, and the reason being is because when I'm easing that sleeve, I want my easing to go evenly from notch to notch. I don't want it to be a bunch here and a little here and a bunch here and a little here. So um, it, I would say if there's anything I would practice, and I'm just pulling this, and I've done it a zillion times, and so you're saying how hard do you pull and da-da-da. 
you pull, you know, just keep it taut. If you don't pull hard enough, your sleeve won't ease up. And if you pull too hard, your machine won't go forward. But how much to pull, I just, you know, gosh, I can't help you with that. Just give it a taut pull. Okay, now this, this um, stitch, what did I do with my scissors? This stitch is gonna come out. This is a basting stitch. So if you, um, you know, have a luxury where you have two machines up, then stitch it in a different thread and it'll just a little easier to see it. But you can see what that did. Okay, we're just gonna, we can't minimize the beauty of what that does. So what tie interfacing does is it does two things. Number one, it eases up the sleeve head for you evenly, beautifully. There's no two rows of stitching, that, you know, none of that. And it also becomes your sleeve head. So you don't have to use a sleeve head. So it's actually very affordable because it's doing two things at once. And it does a beautiful job. So now I'm going to mirror image this again. I'm going to put a pin at the very top because I want the sleeve to be straight. And I'm going to put a pin at the bottom because that's going to align to the side seam. So one to the shoulder seam and one to the side seam. Remember that my high seam is the back and my low seam is the front. So this is the front of the sleeve. And I'm going to come to my garment to the front and I'm going to put it to where it's on the inside. So I'm going to show this to you and then we'll do the other sleeve. I've got it in my lap here. Um, the, the top seam is going to go there. That's a shoulder seam and remember the shoulder seams go to the back. So I kind of pin that to the back at the same time I'm pinning there and then I come into the side seam and the side seams go to the back. So I kind of pin that to where I come to it. I won't have an issue. All right, then just come to the top and just lay that sleeve right inside there. You can see it's going to ripple a little bit because it's eased. So just lay it inside and put a pin in. And you know, maybe if you did four seams, you know, four pins in the front, four pins in the back, whatever. Just don't, don't over pin, you don't need to. Then the last thing we're gonna do is, and you can see it's just gonna fit in there beautifully, is we're gonna sew with the sleeve against the feed dog. The, sew, the sleeve is going to go down. I will tell you that in a silhouette pattern, you will never get, I shouldn't say never, because you guys will challenge me. It will be difficult <laughs> for you to put a sleeve in without tie interfacing. The tie interfacing does so much easing, as I just showed you, kind of before and after, and we'll do the second one so you can watch it again. It does so much that you cannot, you know, I've, the, the whole goal of a sleeve is to build in a lot of ease because ease gives a lot of mobility without increasing the circumference, you know, ease in that sleeve cap. So I've purposely done that, and yet I, you know, I expected you kind of to have tie interfacing. But if you don't have tie interfacing and you're trying to do it without, you're going to have a difficult time, FYI. All right, I want to put this one in so that I'm going to turn my machine back to regular stitch. And it doesn't matter where you start stitching or where you stop stitching. Just lay it down and just go. Now the goal is to sew pretty much on the same line you sewed before, which should be a 3 8 but if you don't, that's, you know, it doesn't have to be that exact. But remember that the sleeve, the armhole, a lot of the armhole is biased, and so you've got a little bit of play here as far as um, what you're doing, or you know, how you're easing it in. So that tie interfacing right now is just stuck inside there. And you're going to go all the way around the armhole. Remember that my, my sleeve is on the bottom. And for many of you, and for all, most of the guide sheets out there, this is really backwards because they always have the sleeve facing up. But remember the sleeve is larger and the bottom pulls in more. So when you're doing that another way, you're really, you're really working against yourself. Now, again, for me, it doesn't matter where I start and where I stop. Keep the edges even because we know what this is concave and convex lines. And if you don't keep these edges even, one section will get longer and one section will get shorter. And that happens very quickly. 
So I want to make sure that my edges stay the same. And then I sew all the way around and just come back to the beginning point. And then we'll show you what it looks like when we finish. Okay. Are you basting in the tie interfacing at 3 8 also? Yes. Okay, so we're going to show you this. And so if you look right there, you can see my basting stitch. I'm going to go ahead and take that basting stitch out. The reason I take it out is I think the sleeve has a tendency to relax a little bit when I take it out. That's an opinion. There's many ladies out there who swear that they don't need to take it out, they love it in, you know, yada yada. But um, in the factories, I'm telling you, they always take it out and for the purpose that it relaxes better. It definitely takes a minute to get it out. I want to get it out because I want to press it and I want to show you. And sometimes when you've sewn, and you're on the same place at the same time, it's hard to get it out. It takes a minute to get it out. I shouldn't say it's hard. It's more time consuming than anything. Definitely not hard. Um, but if you go into where it is and you can see it, you can start there. Sometimes, depending on how dense your fabric is, sometimes it'll pull out really easily and other times it just doesn't. If you clip one side of it, you can typically come to the inside. You can look at the two stitch lines and tell which one's which. And there's been many times I've gotten them confused, I will say that. And I take my sleeve out, and that's a real bummer. All right, so. If you start it, you can see that if you're kind of gentle with it, the whole thing will come out at one time. Well, it was sort of coming out at one time. Oh, see, I took the wrong line out. I'm taking my sleeve out. Well, you know what, you guys? It's always good to make mistakes so that you guys can see what not to do. So we're going to go back and put that sleeve in. I only took it out. I only ripped it out a little bit. And my tie interfacing is still in there, so my easing would still be okay. I could have sworn it was the other line. All right, here we go. Try number two. But first you don't succeed. What do they say? Try, try again. I think there's three times where you're supposed to try. Okay, let's put that in there. And let's do it again. Okay. All right, so there's my tie interfacing line because I can see it. And I'm actually going to keep continuing to get this out because it's really pretty when it's out. I think it relax. I really do think it just relaxes better. But if you have this much trouble, I guess you could just leave it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Maybe that's why it wouldn't pull out. I had the wrong seam. Okay, there we go. I'm going to clip these in. Now, after you know it's done right, and I'm going to press it first, I'm going to go back and serge it. But that's because it's an unlined jacket. If you were in a jacket that was lined, you would never. Lining and finishing are, I mean, lining and serging are both finishing techniques. And so you would never line and serge. Only in an unlined jacket do you serge. OK. I can still see a little bit there. And for the sake of you guys, oh, there it comes out. All right. 
Now sometimes, like in this case, where I sew pretty close to the same line both times, you kind of sew over that basting stitch. And that, when you do that, it makes it a little more difficult to get out. Okay, so let's press it, because I want to show you how to press it. So the first thing you're going to do is just lay it on the end of your board and get, you're going to press all the seam allowances out into the armhole, away from the body, into the armhole. And again, that's where I think it's nice when you're working with a fabric that just presses so nicely, because that press is very quick to do and very easy to do. So typically when I press, I'll press from the wrong side and then I'll switch it around and press from the right side. And the sleeve is no exception. We'll do the same thing with the sleeve. Okay, so all of these seams. So when I say all of these seams, I'm talking two layers of fabric and two layers of tie interfacing. And this is when the tie interfacing starts to do what it does best, which is uh, the reason they use it in ties and the reason I say to you, can you use anything else? No, because it's doing everything. Ties, if you notice, on the edge of the tie, the tie doesn't ever mat down. It doesn't ever um, crease because the tie interfacing and the way it's woven gives a really nice um, kind of a roll line, which is exactly what we're looking for here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push all of this cut myself. I don't know how I did that. Anyway, I'm going to press all those seams out. And I'm going to show it to you because it's just pretty. All those seams are going to go into the armhole itself. And you don't, in this particular case, again, why I love this jacket is this is a armhole that has no, I mean, it, it's eased in, so it's a jacket armhole with no shoulder pad. So I just really like this jacket. Obviously, you guys know at this point I like this jacket. And here I'm just going to do the top. Okay, so that's your pressing of it. Let's take a look. And I'm actually going to put it on the, the mannequin so that we can take a look at it. Um, I want you to see that sleeve head, and I want you to see what it's doing. So isn't that pretty? See, I've got these little straggles that I still haven't gotten that tie interfacing out. I feel like I've been kind of sloppy here this morning. Just be, you know, take your time. Okay, but what you'll see is how beautiful that sleeve hang. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. And that cap and that sleeve head, the whole thing is really, really nice. Okay, so what I want to show you and I was going to do it again, but we don't need to do it again. We'll just hit rewind and show it like that. But see how pretty that bias front is? Oh my goodness, I just love it. The lapel. And then I haven't figured out what I'm going to do. There's one other thing I want to show you, though. Um, I want to show you, or just go through the concept, because I was asked about it, as far as putting elastic in the back. Um, but this particular fabric, I haven't decided how I'm going to do the, the lapel because this particular fabric has this really beautiful um, selvage. And I'm thinking that it'd be really pretty to come in with a selvage in some way, again, to bind it. I haven't really figured out what I want to do, but it's really beautiful. So I'm not sure how I'm going to finish those edges. In this one, if we look at this one for a little bit, all I did was um, took, I picked a decorative stitch on the sewing machine. And that decorative stitch went all the way around. I, I really, really like it. And then I put a clasp at the waist. Obviously, that's optional. Um, I like, you can see, I like the jacket. I wear it open most of the time, but there's no reason why you can't. I wanted to talk just briefly about this in the back. But before I do that, you can just now come in, and it's marked on the pattern. You just fold that over, or you can leave it open either way. The one I have on is knit, and I just left it open. But just make sure you follow the marks so that the two sides are the same. But this would be really pretty for a little pin or a little brooch that you have on there as far as putting that together. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that sleeve is so pretty. All right. Um, in the back here, I want to talk about this. So typically, um, I'm going to measure the back of this jacket. 
and I measured the back of this jacket as 20 inches. And so when I did that, I cut my elastic um, to be, you want it to be half and then half again. So two thirds basically, or I'm sorry, three fourths. So half would be um, 10 and then half again would be five. So you want to cut your elastic 15 inches. So lay 15 if your back is 20, but just whatever your back is. I've lost my scissors, <laughs> I don't know where my scissors went. But anyway, I want to cut that, um, put it on, kind of mark where your, mark where your waist is. So there's my 15 inches. And then I think, personally, two inches is a little bit too thick to do in the waist, but again, it's all a look. So I kind of cut mine down, and I cut it down to about one and a half inches. Because then I can leave a little bit on both edges and still have my stitching be about one inch apart. You'll see if you start noticing these gathered backs, I just really, really like them. There are variables. You'll see different variables out there. All right, so I've got my elastic pre-cut. I'm going to pull it. I'm going to mark where I want it, pull it from one side, pull it to another. And literally, like you can see here, I just stitched over and came back. And it's just cute as can be. I love this sleeve rolled up. I did that because I felt like it was just a little bit different. And so I just, I, I just really liked it. I like the look. I like the whole casual vibe that's going on there. And then I'm going to do it with black pants. Fun? Okay, let's answer some questions. So we can do all kinds of edgings on this. Boy, there's more ideas on edging than I can even imagine. But I think on this one I'm going to do some kind of trim with the um, Chanel did a treatment, is who I saw, to be honest. And what they did is they took two layers, okay? Because when you're looking at this, you're actually looking at both layers or you're looking at a change. So if you do two layers, let me just show you this really quick. I'll just cut a little sample because this is really what was going on in my head. If you cut two layers and you do one on top and one on bottom, and you stitch them on however you want to stitch them on. I mean, you could actually stitch them like this. So stitch them to where uh, both sides. And then flip them to the outside. And you can see what that does is it causes a trim that's correct on both sides. It was really cool. So I stood there long enough in the Chanel store, and they asked if they could help me 600 times. But even when you turn a corner, see, you can take those two layers and bring them out and stitch, and it makes a really pretty, now it takes, it'll probably take on this is why I decided to roll the cuffs up, because it's a yard, it's like three yards of fabric in order to do this on the, on the side like that. But the good news is, is if I get three yards, I just, I don't need any other piece that's using the selvage. So I can actually use the selvage along those three yards. Or actually, I have two selvages. So even if I get two yards, I'll probably have enough. All right, but I just wanted to show you that. All right? All right. Are you adding a casing on the inside or just sewing the elastic to the inside? I don't add a casing. I just sew the elastic right to the inside. I'll show you on the inside of this one. I'll just pull this up so you can see it. But I, oh, it's black on black. Sorry about that. But no, I don't add a casing. I don't, I don't really see why a casing is needed, to be quite honest. I think a casing is kind of a wasted step, and it takes much longer. The, the advantage of a casing is that the elastic is even. But if you half this and then quarter it, this elastic will be just as even. And, I, you know, I've gotten to where I can sew this you know, just pull evenly all the way across so that you don't, it's like the tie interfacing, so you don't get a clump here and then it's smooth over here. Okay? All right, so our pattern, our fabric was 58, 52. Um, our patterns are on the Fit to Stitch site. They're on the under donations. There's the two patterns, the 125. We will use that in a sew along, you guys. The sew along that we do for Toys for Tots, we'll go ahead and do the 125. Except the only thing that keeps haunting me in the back of my mind, and I haven't had a chance to check, is I think we did a sew along for 125. So if we haven't done a sew along for 125, that's what we'll do for our Toys for Tots. But we are going to have one more sew along between now and um, 
December. I want to get one more in. There's a couple ideas that I had that I wanted to do. So let's answer questions. You used a small plaid cut on the bias for the front. Would it work cutting the front on the bias using a larger plaid? Sure, sure, absolutely. You could do any, any plaid. In fact, putting any, a plaid on a bias is a great way, especially right now where plaids are so popular for fall, it's a great way to use them but not have to deal with their difficulty level. Not that they're difficult, but you understand what I'm saying. It's just another level of care you have to go through. So just throw them on the bias and you're good to go. You could tie, I could have tied this in with a solid red sleeve, a solid red black, back or a black. You know, there's all kinds of fun things that would have worked really well. Have you a Chanel inspired pattern? Numerous, uh, 116, uh, 4200. Yeah, I mean, I hang out in that Chanel shop on a regular basis. Don't, I never buy a thing, but just hang out there and copy their ideas. Now, the ideas, you can always see them online, but the details are hard to see online. So that's why I love looking to see how they do this. And it's surprising. It's actually a little shocking as to how simplistic their ideas are and how expensive their clothing is. Because certainly the price they're charging is not because the labor that it took to make that garment or the fabrication. It's just simply because it has that wonderful name, Chanel, on it. Okay, so we will see you in a week. We have our uh, November POM, I think. No, we have another webcast before, I'm sorry. Then the November POM. Oh, the, um, the next webcast is going to be on um, our, our favorites. It's just our favorite tips, our favorite um, ideas that we want to pull together. And we just want to make kind of an end the year what I should be thinking about over the holidays. <laughs> so when I sit down to sew, these are things that I'm still seeing you all struggle with that I want to kind of like a best of. So I'm not sure what we'll name that webcast, but we'll figure it out. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Happy sewing, you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.